Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Colony Ship. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he chose to join me today, because uh, we killed a gun thug, and... Ooh, worker jacket, nice. I can unload it from here? Nice stuff, okay. So, uh, let's loot all. Uh, Braxton is outside. Ah, that's, that's fine, Evans, what did you get myself into? Myself into? No, what did you get me into? So we can click on Evans over here. We're both level one. Hmm. Okay. I think I should be the one to take all, as, all the damage. What are we looking at here? Jacket? Uh, I think that's not as good. There's a button for comparing? No, this is different, isn't it? What is that? Equip. Oh, <gasps> it is different. That's why it wasn't comparing. And you can compare if you click, yeah, Alt, over here. Uh, so we have a bolter, and mm, I could go with a, yeah, pro, is that 10 millimeter? Is this 10 millimeter? Or 9 millimeter, I should say. It is 9 millimeter. This is 9 millimeter as well. Yes, it is. Okay, so unload that, get this one, and reload. I hope I can fire one bullet at a time, because otherwise it's just kind of bad. The accuracy is still minus 5, so that works well enough. And you're going to need to reload that. And you're going to need to reload that. That is a sweet weapon right there. And I'm just going to reload this as well. How much ammo do I have right now? Oh, I also forgot about the boots. Might as well. Or they're not just boots. They're they're also the knee things or whatever those are. Let's see. Are these better? No, they're not better. So you are going to wear them. No, you actually already have them. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's all good. We have a key card over here. And that's... Uh, well... Can I talk to you? What can I do for you? Yeah, what's your deal, Evans? Why did you join me? Not much of a future standing outside a dry goods store waiting to get a shot get shot at. You see a brighter future down this path? I hired on with Abe for the same reason you did odd jobs for Tanner. It's the only work a nobody with a gun can get in these parts. But now we've got a chance to make a name for ourselves out here. If I'm gonna die, at least I'm reaching for something. Life is a gamble, sure, but now I've got a stake, something to gain. Okay, what do you figure uh, to gain? I'm gonna hire on with one of the big outfits, Evan replies. Not as the point man they put out front to soak up the first assault. I'm gonna be a sergeant or maybe even a captain. Just gotta put the work in is all. Hmm, what do you think about the ship? What's there to think of? Shrugs Evan. I hope the ship is still on course, otherwise this whole thing is a cosmic scale fool's errand. Maybe one, d uh, one day our descendants will walk under an open sky and breathe fresh air, but we're doomed to live out here, uh, our lives here. All because our shit for brains ancestors thought leaving Earth was going to solve all their problems. Why do you say that? According to the Founding Fathers, Earth was an overcrowded hellhole and they were forced to flee. But take a look around, Evans gestures broadly at the ship. Was it worse than this? To tell you the truth, I'm having trouble picturing something much worse than the pit. Home sweet home, Evans says, with strange affection. Hmm. Hey, I did save your butt just now. Can you give me things? I don't know how to thank you, Titus, says Abe, wiping sweat from his forehead. These ruffians, they would have killed me dead. God knows I don't have much, but I'll give you all I can spare and then some. Turns out Abe could only spare two small boxes of ammo, 50 rounds each, but it's definitely better than nothing and I can help myself to some ammo, which I will not. What are you going to do now? Pray for less excitement in my life? What else can I do? Didn't you move here from the habitat? You can always go back. Back, laughs Abe. As bad as the pit is sometimes, the habitat is ten times worse. The protectors are all about their mission, and every poor bastard that lives in their enclave has to toe the line, whether he likes it or not. They tax you up the wazoo and then expect you to contribute what little you've left to the war effort. The war effort? For the grand finale, you see, the protectors have been gearing up for war ever since the mutiny. The Brotherhood's been doing the same, of course. If you ask me, neither side wants to fight, but they've been beating their chests for the last hundred years, so they have no choice but to go through with it. And the church? <laughs> Waiting on the sidelines to finish off the winner. It's a smart play. I wonder if it is. So let's auto sort through this. I have a shot. It's a shotgun. It's a boomstick, but it's it works as a shotgun. I thought it was an SMG because it kind of looks like one a little bit. 
Okay, so we're done in here. Let's see what awaits us outside. Wait, oh, the door isn't open, that's why. Rumor has it that Captain Braxton once served a higher power, that in the days before his crisis of faith, he was known as faithful gunner Jeremiah Braxton among the Church of the Elect. There's plenty to talk about why he left, but as is often the case, no story is more compelling than the others. Backed up by a few like-minded men and picking up more recruits along the way, Braxton left the church and wound up in the pit, where good fighting men are always in high demand. Around the same time, the Brotherhood has head started nosing around, eager to establish a foothold here. Braxton and his regulators offered the good people of the pit their services. After much debate, they were hired to drive the Brotherhood's men out, which was accomplished with brutal efficiency. Thank God you're alive, says Braxton, holstering his gun. When I heard the gunfire, I assumed the worst. Yeah, I thought he didn't want to get involved. It's not my fight, says Braxton, but someone has to step in and protect these people. I have nothing against Jonas, but this time he's gone too far. What can I do to help? Quite a lot, actually. If we move against Jonas, he'll claim that the regulators are taking over and many would side with him. We don't want that. But you're one of them. If you challenge Jonas, people will side with you. Of course, we'll stand with you, but it will be your fight. Okay, I think I can do this. Then talk to Jonas. Put him on notice in front of everyone. Let them all hear what you have to say. Uh... Why? Won't he know that we're coming? We aren't going to stab him in the back, Braxton says firmly. A man deserves the right to defend himself. Okay, let's wait for them to leave. What are you gonna do? asks Evans. Um... I... I haven't decided yet. What's your take on it? What's that saying? Better the devil you know than the devil you don't? So there's that. But sometimes I wonder whether the devil's gonna... Or that devil's gonna let it all go to hell. Jonas did build this town, but that's as far as he's going to take it. He did a good job keeping everyone on their best behavior at first, back when the pit was more of a camp, but the bigger the town got, the more lawless it became. And Braxton? Braxton? His men do a good job patrolling the decks around the town, but I'm not sure I'd want to see them patrolling the pit and telling folks what to do. If Braxton ends up on top, who knows how far he'd take that law and order thing. Although probably not as far as the Brotherhood would, so there's that. Um, hmm... Interesting. I wonder if I can side with Jonas now. Oh, I ruined. I just, I just, I pressed the two. I'm very sorry. There we go. It's taken care of. I uh, accidentally tried to steal some stuff, but no, we didn't do that. I don't want to do it. And obviously we failed because I knew we would because we don't have any points in steel. That's how the system works. So we can confront Jonas and we should confront Jonas, but maybe we're going to be hired by Jonas. It's in the crossroads? No, the crossroads is the name of the, the name of the mission. Braxton wants you to confront Jonas. You can find him in the promised land. Oh, escape doesn't exit this screen. Um, promised land is over here. Oh, this land. I forgot about that. Excuse me, Caleb and some guards. It's, uh, Hmm. There's another door over there. It's a bulkhead. Hey, Caleb. Hi. Welcome to the promised land, says the bartender, pouring you a fluorescent drink. He spills a few drops on the counter and they shimmer and gleam in the light, dissolving the paint and etching the metal. The first round is on the house. Been here long? Too long, if you ask me. Maybe it's time to head back to the habitat. Yeah, what is, what's it like, the habitat? Different things to different people. If you think the mission is more important than anything else, you'd feel right at home in the Protectorate, and their shenanigans won't bother you none. Hell, you might even be leading that parade. But if it's freedom you crave above all else, then you won't find a finer place than the old pit. Uh, then why do you think of moving back? Too much freedom? The bartender grins shyly. Truth be told, I, I won't mind some stability, and if I have to join a club to enjoy it, then so be it. Yeah, you're all, like, basically, uh, freelancers here, so it, uh, I can understand that being a little bit unmooring. We have Samuel. Keep walking. And we have the doorman. 
Mr. Radford is expecting you. You can go in. Hmm. I don't find any solace in knowing that I am expected. For a scavenger, Jonas Redford was more successful and more ambitious than most. In order to facilitate more efficient runs into the mission control ruins, Jonas set up a base camp in cargo hold number 3, right next to the action. Such a good idea couldn't remain secret for long, and his fellow scavengers soon began pitching their tents nearby. With its increasing popularity, the camp attracted a growing crowd of traders, whores, and other hangers-on, and people began to see it as a rugged alternative to the habitat, which promised safety but insisted on submission in exchange. The habitat did. At some point, Jonas realized that more money was waiting to be made right there in the pit, as it had come to be called, than out in the, quote, wasteland, unquote. He opened the promised land, the finest and only whorehouse in town, and settled into a role as the de facto mayor of this frontier town. You've got some nerve, Titus, says T Jonas, putting down his glass. I know why you're here, so say your words and get out. Uh... Hold your horses, Jonas. I don't know what you've heard, but I'm here to warn you that Braxton is stirring up some shit. Is he now? Says Jonas, showing no surprise. Word on the street is you're working for Braxton. He raises an eyebrow, waiting for an answer. If Braxton wants to be mayor, or a mayor anyway, he's going about it the wrong way. Jonas nods, satisfied with your answer. Can I count on you in this fight then? We need all the help we can get and then some. I'm with you, Jonas. What do you need help? Uh, what do you need me to do? You're going to help us take out the regulators, he says, as if resigned to an unpleasant chore that's been let slide too long. They outnumber us, but a certain piece of gear will even the odds. Ever heard of a brainwave disruptor? A, a grenade? Never seen one, but I've heard it messes with your brain. That it does. It's an anti-riot grenade, Earth-made. It scrambles your brain and makes you forget what you're doing and just stand there t taking the air. Braxton will be watching my boys like a hawk, but since you're an unknown, you can run fetch it while Sam, he nods at his enforcer, runs interference. Where am I going to find this thing? Good question. The earth mail relics aren't exactly common these days, but I bet Cole can point you in the right direction. He sells all kinds of crap. Most of it ship-made, of course, but he also keeps track of who has what. Okay, let's visit Cole's gadgets, then. Look at that, I didn't get killed on the spot. Which is... I... Yeah, well... I, I, I hadn't... I hadn't really made my allegiances uh, super you know, tight or anything, so I guess it makes sense. It makes sense. I was a little bit... Uh, not afraid, but... Well, I wouldn't be killed on the spot. I, I would start a fight on the spot. Uh, but uh, that didn't happen. So, we're going for Cole's Gadgets. Where is that? I, I do know... I do want to go here to Whiskey Jack, because I think there is something down here that I can do. Cole's Gadgets! Of course, Cole's Gadgets. Wait. Cole is going to... Wait. Not, of course, Cole's gadgets. This wasn't... Abe's... Where's Honest Abe? Oh, Abe's store is up there. Right. Let's go to... Let's... While we do that quest, let's go down here to Whiskey Jack. Because, uh... Tanner? What you got for me, Titus? A few questions. Well, if that's all you've got, ask your questions. Uh, you think we're gonna make it to Proxima Centauri? Me thinking about it won't help us get there faster, so let's worry less about things we can't change and focus on those that we can. Like our living conditions. And this is basically the setup for the whole game as well, by the way, in terms of uh, in terms of the, the lore and all that. It's very much a background thing that we're going to... Uh, the, the, what was the name of the thing? Proxima Centauri, I think? Either way, it's just... it. Yeah, it's where we're going, I suppose, and it shapes the lives of everybody, but not too... Not so much so that we need to worry about it. Uh, even if we never arrive there? We will never arrive there, Tanner says irritably. Maybe the ship will get there one day and maybe she won't. Let's leave it to future generations to worry about as we have enough problems as it is. What do you know about the mutiny? 
What everyone knows, says Tanner, gesturing to the bartender for another round. Some folks didn't like the way the ship authority was running things, so they rebelled and, well, here we are. Free at last, eh? Yeah, was the ship authority really that bad? Well, says Tanner, scratching his beard. That's a philo philosophical question. There's no doubt the ship authority was a bunch of self-important assholes who loved telling everyone what to do. The mutineers chopped its head off, but three new ones grew right back. Now, even more assholes are telling everyone what to do. The Protectors, the Brotherhood, and the Church are to call this situation an improvement. Yeah. So, the reason why I want to come here is because Jack, over here, will actually get us another companion. What can I get you? Any work around here? Well, since you asked, there's this fella owes money to just about everyone in the area. The name is Jedediah Walker, but he just goes by Jed. Balance owed is uh, 1,200 credits, including interest. If you manage to collect, you'll get 250. How does that sound to you? Jed Walker? That name sounds familiar. I can tell you he run his mouth faster than he runs up a tab. And that's saying something. Jed claims to have traveled the ship from stern to stern and made deals with every type of merchants. Fanatic and scav known to the void. How such a worldwide entrepreneur ended up living in a rusted out container furnished with discarded packing material is a mystery to me. But I just serve liquor, never claim to be one of the big brains around here. Where can I find him? Ask around in Camp Town. Start with the local bars. That sounds like a good plan, actually. Camp Town it is. Camp Town is a different area. So, I am not... Oh, I can just fast travel there. That's good. You can you can just explore around if you want to. Which, actually, we I am going to do later, but not right now, because uh, we might get ourselves into trouble. I do remember, while I was messing around with the controls... I remember getting myself into a lot of trouble uh, because uh, some fools were doing things and uh, I decided, you know what, let's try how the combat system works. And it works, it works. I don't remember where they were though. But they're, they're somewhere. There's there's some some uh, NPCs doing nasty things every once in a while. So, um, where am I? Can I just click on me for double click? Yes, I can. Is this Camp Town? Oh yeah. Lock can't be picked. There's the gate guard over here. The fuck are you looking at? Yeah, I think you can come in. I'm not 100% sure how we come in. But I did find this place by myself. Main Street. Was it down there? Oh no. Oh, look at that. All that's left of a turret that defended Main Street from an angry mob during the last year's riot. Oh, this one is it's working then. Yeah, you can see that it has a health bar. A dead turret. The ammo drum is empty and the targeting control module is missing. Really? Huh. Born free, somebody wrote up there. Or painted. So, we're looking for Jedediah. I can open that lock, I think. Target out of reach. You pick the lock. Save the game. Uh, we have a Bulldog 2. That's good. I think. Is it better than my current one? Well, it depends on what it uses. It uses 9mm. So, oh, he doesn't compare it to this one over here. 10 to 14, 9 to 13. Yeah, it's not as good. 6 to 10. Yeah, this sucks. So, oh, it's loaded already. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, I can't go in there. It looks like a, you know, access, accessible interior area. And I also can't go over here. You can't go past this. Interesting. Well, we're good. Let's go upstairs. To the Emporium. Old Earth Emporium. Oh, and there's a hologram up there. Excuse me. Hi. Uh, proprietor? Welcome to the Old Earth Emporium. The proprietor is so excited you almost can't tell it's a pitch. Where do you want to go, my friend? Do you want to walk the street of ancient Rome? Sail the seven seas before they went toxic? Save Earth from brain-eating alien invaders? Uh, let's get to the part where you tell me what you're selling. Movies, he says. Just like the olden times, what you're looking at here is a fully immersive simulation. Puts you smack dab in the middle of the action. Back before the mutiny, this black magic box was a training simulator used to upload skill sets into a person's melon. Achieve in minutes what would take decades to learn in the real world. Now imagine what this level of tech can do for modern entertainment. Forget about everything else you've seen and done. 
It's talking... I'm talking about the best damned experience of in your entire life. Wait, you're telling me you have a machine that can load skills into people's minds like software into, into a computer? It sure can, if you have an authori uh, authorization token, the proprietor replies dryly. He's plainly frustrated by how insistently you're missing the point. Do you have such a thing? No, you don't. So why do you take a, why do not take a load off and enjoy some of Earth's finest films instead? Uh, hold on. Tell me more about these tokens. Well, the ship authority kept a pretty tight fist around him, and so as, as far as I understand, they didn't want just anybody to take a ride and come out of a, su a super soldier or a nuclear engineer. I think the mutiny showed they were pretty much bang on the money there. So you need one of them thingies to access the fancy cognition protocols. The token routes the request to the central computer and pop. Out comes another productive member of society. Yeah, where does one get these tokens? Other than filling out a form in triplicate with a ship authority? No place. I mean, maybe there are some lying around here and there, but how bored would you have to be to go looking? Don't answer that, because I already got the cure. How about a nice World War IV flick? It's about the crew of a damaged hunt killer, sorry, hunter killer forced to land in a pacification zone. Classic of the genre. Non-stop action. You're gonna love it. Uh, which one was World War IV? The African War, the Nigerian Confederacy versus the Empire of the Congo. The Nigerians were subjugating their neighbors and calling it a confederation while the Congolese were b busy expanding their borders in all directions. Didn't take long for their interests to clash. Not surprisingly, China and Europe backed Nigeria, their biggest trading partner. The Pan-American Protectorate and the Caliphate sided with the Congo, probably the, despite the European Feder Federation and take them down a notch. The rest, as they say, is history. Did we win? I, I'm more, I, I want to ask this because who is we here? Well, after three years of fighting, everybody said they won. Oh, he doesn't answer it. Okay. The enemy got to keep the north. Most of it was raised anyway, but we did liberate the south. I don't know what that means. I think it's left uh, vague on purpose. What was Earth like before we left? The founding fathers called it Sodom and Gomorrah. I wonder what they'd call this little slice of heaven says the proprietor, gesturing around him. You think things were better before the mutiny? Compared to all this? Hard to imagine worse, says the, pro the proprietor, scratching the back of his head. Of course, if you listen to the Brotherhood, the ship was nothing but a floating prison before the mutiny. If you listen to the Protectors, it was Paradise Lost, so the truth's gotta be somewhere in, the be in between. Not that it matters now. What does the church say? The church? They blamed the ship authority for the collapse and the mutineers for plunging the ship into chaos, which puts them at odds with both the Brotherhood and the Protectors. The chaplain general says the, that had the church been in charge, none of that would have happened. But I have a feeling that he's talking about his plans for the future, not the past. I was thinking this was going to be a scam, where he puts me to sleep and, and then steals all my stuff. Especially because that's an easy lesson to learn early, earlier in the game, because you don't have as much loot. But I'm thinking that might not be the case. What's it going to be, friend? I am... I have a token? Is that what I think it is? Asks the proprietor, examining the antique token with interest. You still, you think it still works? Yeah, let's find out. I'm gonna insert the token into the slot. Select a token. Oh, I actually don't have a token. I figured I didn't, because I, I didn't notice anything. It could have been that key card. But, for all I know, it could have been. But uh, it was not, it was not. That That is just the line there, if, if, um, you know, we have tokens. Manny. Manpower. Staffing Solutions. I love it. And his name is Manny. What can I do for you for? Manny leans forward and puts on the smile he keeps for clients. He doesn't. He doesn't do that. He, uh... I don't have a... I just leave. Hmm. So, we're still looking for Jed. We have a meat seller over here. Synthetic meat. 200 flavors. Uh, you sell synthetic meat here? Really? Show me a man of taste and I'll show you someone who's sick of ingesting end tabs, says the meat man excitedly. He gestures you closer. What am I selling, you ask? Real synthetic meat paste infused with old world flavors not seen since planet Earth. What would you say to a salty New Yorker? Or tomatoey mirinara red? What about spring mix? Yeah, you look like a spring mix man for sure. You sell meat that tastes like spring mix? 
My friend, we do it all! The salesman squeezes an oily, col color colorless substance out of a grubby tube and rubs it between his fingers. See what I'm saying? 60% organic? Eat it raw or stir fry it? Earth style. This is the closest you'll ever get to eating real buffalo, but the actual earth animal never tasted half this good. Why? Because even the ancients didn't have our flavor infusion technology. Plucking up another unmarked tube, he squeezes a, a cyan-colored glob into a plastic cup. The Danish blue melts in your mouth. I gotta warn you, though. Close your eyes and you might think you're sitting under a tree by a river of water someplace. Eating a... B <laughs> I love it. A river of water because they probably have rivers out of other things. Eating a blue Danish thing. Whatever that is. The Danish blue. Sure. Well, how exactly does one make synthetic meat? Our starter cells come from fungal protein, a side benefit of the fungus infestation in the hydroponics. We grow the cells in a protein-rich cerium de decanted from the biorecyclers, which incidentally reduces the load on the ship's recycling systems while providing a steady supply of delicious, nutritious meat paste. Win-win! The biorecyclers are where dead bodies get dumped. The key word is recycled, smiles the salesman. Let's not dwell on what goes in. What matters is what comes out. Mostly purified organic compost, chock full of nutrients and minerals. I mean, where do you think end taps come from? That is, that's a fair point, actually. It is actually all the things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Earl and citizen. Earl's office is added to your map. Oh. So we didn't have, yeah, because we don't have anything. Oh, that's kind of cool. The first town. You already know all the stuff. But then, from then on, you need to unlock the... That that makes sense, actually. That is good. Earl. Jobs triple exclamation mark I see up there. Must own a gun. Oh. You know how to handle firearms? The proprietor asks. Apparently not a man for pleasantries. Haven't lost any fingers yet. Excellent, he replies without any enthusiasm. You're hired. Hired for what? Why do you think someone hires a gun hand? Either because he expects trouble or is planning to stir their, some up. Pay is a hundred credits on completion. Nothing up front. Are we in business or aren't we? I, uh, su um, suppose? All right, the proprietor says approvingly. By the way, I think this guy, um, is also going to give us a, a, an NP, a, a, a companion. But I'm not 100% sure yet. We'll see. The client is a fellow by the name of Trevor Chauncey, known around these parts as Chance. He's got a meet set up with the Granger boys to sell some kind of doohickey, and his uh, worried things might get dicey. If they do, you get to stand between him and a ha hail of bullets. Why is he worried? Probably trying to get swift and sell them some junk gussied up like valuable tech. If I'm right and they see through his bullshit, he'll have a problem on his hands. And since he's the client, his problems are your problems. We good? Uh, sure, sounds good. You can find Chance in the nearby bar which doubles up as his office. Tell him Earl sent you. I will do what you are asking. Storekeeper over here. So, easy money is the name of this uh, of this uh, mission. Somehow I think it isn't gonna be easy money. So he said, near Boon, Boon's Moonshine Bar. Well, the problem is I have no idea where that is. Hit and kill, finest shotgun cartridges. Excuse me. Welcome to Hit and Kill, says the storekeeper, giving you a quick appraising look. We carry high-end merchandise for the discerning customer, like you, he adds with less certainty. Uh, I'm going to browse the wares, and uh, I could, I'm just going to keep some of this stuff. I don't think there's inventory uh, or carry weight limits, so I'll just hang on to this stuff. Besides, it doesn't sell for that much. How much money do I have? A thousand? That's pretty decent. I could get, yeah, you can outfit yourself with new weapons if you need to. Which we very well might do, uh, might. Uh, but I'm more concerned about my ammo situation. 77. 77 is okay. That that might allow us for one battle or two, and then we can come back. Oh, look at that! It's Boone's moonshine, and that's chance. Good, because we're out of time for the day, and the bar is full. Uh, but yeah, so for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Colony Ship. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.